Hello everybody, I'm Yvette of DIY Uniquely Yvette. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. In honor of fall coming up very soon, I'm doing a theme of pumpkins and I'm going to do three simplistic projects this week. Because they're so simple and easy to make, I was able to do three in one. You're welcome. <laughs> so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below of what you think, whatever you want to say, and let's get into the video. Our first project will start out with this piece of scrap two by four. I'm going to cut off the edges at a slant, like a 45 degree angle, and make it sort of look like a rustic, eventually it's going to look like a rustic um, shaped pumpkin. I'm not going to try to be perfect with my slants. It just needs to be able to stand up like this when it's finished. So let's get over to the miter saw and cut the edges off. For the stem, I'm going to use this branch that I, um, that I cut from my tree in my yard a few weeks ago and used it for another project. So I'm going to cut up a cut off a small piece like this, maybe an inch or so big to make the stem for the pumpkin. Okay, so we have our little piece of scrap wood cut with slants on the ends. I have the slanted part of the stem so that when I glue it to the top of the pumpkin, it sits sort of like at an angle like this. Yeah, I'm gonna sand everything and then be right back. For this project, I'm going to use some of this twine and I want to make it, I want to make it spiral. So I'm going to paint it with some Mod Podge so that when it dries, it becomes stiffer and I can shape it a little better with uh, using this stick. What I'm first going to do is glue the end of it to the stick just to hold it on there. There we go. And then I'm going to paint it with the Mod Podge, okay? And then I'm going to wrap it around the stick and let it dry on there while we're while we move back to the block, the body of the pumpkin. Okay, I've glued both ends of the twine and I've covered the twine with glue, with Mod Podge, and I'll set that aside to dry. Now we're working with the body of the pumpkin. I'm going to paint it jack-o'-lantern orange from Apple Barrel. Now I'm going to add to a cup this tropic orange and I'm going to add a little bit of black paint to it to the tropic orange just a little bit to darken it some the orange paint the jack-o-lantern paint is still wet I want it to stay wet until I add these other colors I also have some white here Now we're going to go ahead and paint the um, stem and I'm going to use this apple barrel chestnut color. You know what you could do instead of um, painting, painting the piece, you could get a piece of uh, wood that still has the bark on it. So it has texture, it has color, and then you could use that as the stem. Um, I have, I actually have some that I got from a Dollar Tree a long time ago. It's, it comes in a bag of a lot of them and you could use those instead. I just wanted to use up the part of the tree that I cut off from outside and used in my previous project. I'm going to use the smallest size of these um, wooden beads that I got from Amazon a while ago. I'll leave a link to them in the description below 
and I'm going to use a few of the smallest ones and I'm going to paint them with this same chestnut cup of color. Okay, let's go ahead and glue the stem on top of the pumpkin. I'm using Type On 3 glue, but I mean, you know, it's not that serious, so you could definitely use hot glue for this. We'll do that and just put it in the center of the top. That's all starting to look like a pumpkin, isn't it? Now we're going to go ahead and glue these five little beads together. I'm going to try to turn them on the side a little bit. I kind of just wanted them to look sort of sort of like a, a cluster of grapes, but I don't know. Now that the glue has dried on the twine, I'm going to take it off with a stick. Here we go. See that? I'm going to glue it around here like this. So I'm going to use this, uh, what is this stuff? Some type of mossy stuff that I got from the Dollar Tree a long time ago. Just want to use a little bit, not too much. And put that on the top too. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want, I don't want it to look like a nest. And I don't want it to overwhelm the stem. I'm going to hot glue that down a little bit. But I think it's important, personally I think it's important to put the string under this moss. And then we just pop the berries in some kind of way. And this pumpkin is finished. Okay, for our next project, we have these four pieces of wood that are 20 inches long. We have these two pieces that are eight inches long each. And I'm going to use some watered down dark brown paint. I did add some black in here, but I'm not seeing it, so. Okay, what I've done here is space out all four of the long boards equally apart and I laid the shorter ones across. The top one is crooked. That's not a trick of your eyes or a trick of the camera. <laughs> I did that on purpose. And the bottom one the bottom one is fairly straight. I put them down about a quarter and or one and a quarter inches from the top and the bottom. I put a dab of glue on each Board, and then I used my nail gun to, to hold it in place. Once the board started drying, they started looking kind of ashy. I don't even know why. I don't know if it has to do with the reaction of the paint. I don't actually mind it because it makes the wood look a little old, a little, a little weathered, which is better, I think, than for it all to be looking new. So I kind of like it. Okay, now we have two, these two pieces of wood. They are eight inches long and I'm going to try to make them look like a rustic pumpkin. Now when they come together they're only going to be maybe about this far apart. So I mean it's really it's going to be really really simple like I'm going to dip in just a tiny bit here and then I don't know if you can see that come in a little bit like this with my my scroll saw and then I'm going to curve it around on the ends only on the outside ends like that I hope I can see you can see that I'm going to zoom in close so you can see like this I don't know if it's going to work but that's what I'm going to do. Just dip in a tiny bit. I'm just going to eyeball it really once I get onto the scroll saw. Okay, so I rounded the ends, not the insides. I did a little indentation here and here. And now I'm going to paint it with this Apple Barrel Jack o' Lantern color. Okay, 
let's try a little bit of black this time. I don't know if it's going to work out. But let's try it. But I'm going to water it down. Okay, here we are with the backing we made earlier. And now we're going to put the pumpkin on these two pieces here against the bottom cross piece and we're going to just pull them as close as possible and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue behind each piece and then go ahead you know I'm gonna put it on well, let's see I'll put it on this outside here to make sure it makes contact like this do the same for the other side and then bring them as close as I want them and then I'm going to use the nail gun to hold them in place Yeah, see that um sliding out of position. I don't want that. I don't want them to come too close together. I'll just nail it first. Now I mentioned earlier that you could use these little wood pieces with the um, bark still on them. I got this bag from the Dollar Tree a long time ago, probably over a year. And I took one piece and I cut it down with the scroll saw. It has a little slant on top. And that's the piece I'm going to use to against the pumpkin. Actually, I think I'm going to use a hot glue because this might slip down and fall between the slats. I don't know if you can see that. See, I'm going to use a hot glue so that it can stay immediately. Okay, so I'm going to put the hot glue on the slanted side so that my little stem will be slanted. There we go. I also found some some artificial leaves I'm only going to use one I think I'll use this one I like how it has this a little bit of this weird brown stuff on it you could also cut out a leaf shape with some cardboard if you were to make this so I'm going to glue that on so I'll do that and now I'm going to use just a tiny bit of that moss I used earlier I don't want to overdo it. But that's our pumpkin. Now we'll move on to the next thing that we're going to put on this project. The next two items I want to add to my project are a moon and a blackbird. So I made these templates. There's a funky looking long moon. I wanted the, to have the same type of style as the pumpkin. The pumpkin is long and thin, so the moon has that same style. The bird, not so much. It's just, it's less elongated. But here's the black bird. A simplistic design. I decided not to even bother with um, legs and feet and all that. I might do an eye when I paint it. I don't know for sure. But this is a simplistic thing. So we have here two boards glued together. Um, I think this is eight inches long by three inches wide. This one is for the bird and this is uh, six and a half inches long by three inches wide. I trace them onto there using my carbon paper. 
and so they're on there so we're going to move over to the scroll saw to cut these out listen someone watching this video may be afraid to get a scroll saw maybe you're afraid of power tools but i think this scroll saw is the safest of all the tools i have maybe apart from the drill the hand drill i watched the video and the guy on the video claimed that even if you get your finger caught in here in this blade while it's on the most you'll get is like a nick a scratch or or, or cut like that and it'll hurt of course but it won't chop your finger off <laughs> that's what he says so you may or may not have seen me in my videos previously and i tend toward clumsiness so I've never once even nicked my finger with this. I know how you feel, but don't worry. I'm not worried. This machine gives me the least amount of worry. And I've never hurt myself. I've never even come close to get, getting hurt with this machine. So you should consider getting one for yourself. going to start painting the blackbird black <laughs> I wanted to let you know that you take a risk when you're putting together two pieces when you're gluing together two pieces of wood the bird didn't break in any way but the moon did while I was trying to cut out this end it snapped off and so I had to glue it back on it was hard to cut the rest of the moon out after it snapped off so I glued it back on. It's funny that this piece, this end, didn't break off because it's a tinier part. But I don't know. It probably is where I didn't add the glue as well as I could have or I should have. So I'm going to start out with this um, Apple Barrel uh, Anti-Parchment color. And then I'm going to try using this mixture of, uh, let me see, light yellow from Apple Barrel and this white from Apple Barrel. So now that everything is dry, we're going to place the pieces I think we're going to put the bird like right here well, let's put it on here like this so we don't need that much right there that looks pretty good and we're going to put the moon maybe just a little bit more in than the bird. Put it like that. There we go. And we're done for this simplistic project. Okay, now we're ready for our last project. I have a bunch of scrap wood here, and I'm just going to glue it all together, glue all these pieces together. I'm going to go ahead and use the hot glue just so it can work fast. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to use both hot glue and, um, Wood glue. Let's go. I would have liked it to be tighter than that, but that's how it works with the bubble-like hot glue. It's okay. So let's do this one first. 
put some hot glue on here to make it glue fast. This one though, didn't cut off to be the same length, but uh, it doesn't matter. This is going to be behind the actual project in a like a background. Okay, now I have this um, four strips of wood here. These two are seven inches long and these two are nine inches long. This is some dark brown folk art paint that I've watered down and I'm just going to paint these pieces. While these brown pieces are drying over here to the side, I'm going to use this folk art antique parchment color on these ones I first did. Okay, what I've done here is I'll put a dot of glue on the back of some puzzle pieces just to stick them to this paper so that I can paint them more easily. To take them off, I just twist them and it tears off. And once they're on there, I can easily, more easily paint them. Unfortunately, it takes about, say, three coats or so three or four coats, but it dries pretty quickly. I think there's no get ar getting around just doing the three coats. So anyway, I'll be back after I've done them all and they're all dry. Now we're ready to glue these side pieces together like this. I think I'm going to just use this um, hot glue for now. If I have trouble, I guess I'll just, maybe I'll use, um, the wood glue. But that looks like it's going to be okay. And now I'll flip it over. And we're going to try to get this lined up. I think I'm just going to like put a bead of glue on the very edge here. So I'm going to glue here like this. Try to get it lined up correctly. Hopefully. There we go. Okay, so I've started laying out the pieces of the puzzle like this and in a general um, shape of a pumpkin, sort of slightly raised on the bottom and dented on the top, rounded on the edges. It's kind of pumpkin-y shape. And I'm going to glue them down with the hot glue and then I'm going to start filling them in with the rest of these. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is give this pumpkin a stem. And I'm using one of these little um, wood stems that I got from the Dollar Tree a long time ago. And this, but see, it's a little thick and it's a little long. So I'm going to use the scroll saw to cut, make it shorter, but I'm also going to hold it between two long pieces of wood so I can put it against the blade and cut it in half. So it's half its thickness and I'll lay it flat on here like that. Okay, here we are. I cut it in half. Hopefully you can see that. And I cut it shorter this way. What I found that I had to do is um, change the speed that the blade was moving on the scroll saw. You can turn it down. I turned it so I turned it down enough so that I could just hold this in my hand and guide it through like this. I mean, basically that's all I did and it was pretty safe because the blade was moving very slowly. That's how safe I consider the scroll saw to be. I would not do something like that with the, with the miter saw or the table saw. So we're going to just glue this on. 
sort of turn it sideways because that's how I like it. And there we go. Okay, I have this stuff. <laughs> and I tied like a couple pieces together into a bow. I want to put it right there. I have this artificial um, weave. I'm going to cut one off and see if I like it on there. I don't know. I, I want it underneath the bow. So let's see. Maybe like this or this. Let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, let's do that. We'll just pop it up here somewhere. Put this on here. I want it a little sideways like this. I took the leaf off. I decided I didn't want it on there. I pulled out the beads that I'm going to use next. I'm going to use these biggest size. I have a packet. I said it earlier in the video. I have a packet of three different sizes. I put holes in the top here about three inches in on each side. I feel like they're a little too close together, but it's okay. Now I'm going to use this twine and I'm also going to use the um, the beads, their natural color. I'm not going, these are painted actually. I need to take these out. I'm going to use their natural color and hope that works out. I'll put some, some tape on the end of this um, twine so I can thread it through the holes easier. I'm going to go through here. Let me see. Okay, go through here. Um, let's do this. I think this is what I want to do. I'm not sure. Okay. I guess I'll cut it off if I'm thinking wrong here. But I want to knot on top so that when I finish, when I finish this, the beads will be on top rather than in the front or in the back. So now we'll thread this twine through the beads. Okay, like this. Okay. I think they match the backing close enough. I don't need to paint them with that um, antique parchment color. Okay, so we got them all in here. I, I think I have like 14 of these little beads. So what I'm going to do is go through the other hole, tie it into a knot, and now I'm going to cut off the excess. So I'm going to glue it down in the back to keep it out of, out of sight. So that is... All I'm doing with this project. So now let me show you the finished results. Mm -hmm.